I'm not sure how to properly apologize to you all, but I've done my absolute best to give you the best experience. I tried using the narrator I usually rely on, but unfortunately, it's not working today. So, I had to use a different one. I tested several narrators online, but I found their voices weren't quite what I was looking for. So for today, I hope you'll bear with me as I use this narrator instead. I appreciate your understanding. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. There is evidence of a lost civilization, long forgotten. I've previously shown that worldwide, ancient mythology, linguistics, and architecture of the ancients resembled each other. Memory of this defeated empire has been erased. One of the proofs of this worldwide cohesion are pyramids which we find on every continent. Another example of worldwide similarity are star forts and star cities. These are structures built in geometric shapes resembling stars. From the ground, they might be mistaken for regular castles, but from the air, their harmonious shape is recognized. The official narrative as taught in school is that these are fortresses of military purpose that were built by Italians and the French in the 1600s, and that the peculiar geometric design is for defense purposes only. I never learned about star forts in school, never saw anything about them on History Channel, or any movie production. I only became aware of them a few years ago, when researchers of alternative history started pointing them out. The mere fact that I'd never heard of these through conventional and official sources got me wondering. Star forts are marvels of engineering and design. Why did I learn nothing about them until I was well in my 50s? Why is it often the conspiracy theorists that point me toward the most amazing facts? Even if star forts have a mundane explanation, why are they so little known? Everyone I've talked to about star forts in the last five years didn't even know what I was referring to. Let's first show that star forts and cities are global. This one on your screen is in Alcacova, Portugal. And this one is Fort Bortange in the Netherlands. The one in Portugal is on top of a hill, and the one in the Netherlands is surrounded by two waterways. It's easy to conclude that these are military installations, or at the very least for defense against attacks. What's a little more difficult to understand is how they carve these structures into the landscape without modern machinery. There are also gigantic forts that are overgrown and almost no longer recognizable as star forts, such as this one, Willemstad, Netherlands. The one on the right is in Goryakuku, Japan. The outer structure is still there, the inner structure has been replaced. Castellet, Copenhagen. Again, the outer shape is still there, the inner shape has probably been replaced. I say replaced because most star forts look something like this, having an inner structure that mirrors the outer structure. Anyway, this is Fort Care in France. This one is in Ireland, but the inner structure does not mirror the outer. And this is the town of Palmanova, Italy. This massively large star city is said to have been built by the Venetian Republic in 1593, supposedly to commemorate the victory of Christian forces against the Ottoman Empire. The star fort was allegedly built by the Italian architect Vincenzo Scamazzi, according to the Palmanova Wikipedia page. But Scamazzi's Wikipedia page fails to mention this gargantuan feat. His list of architectural accomplishments is prolific. If we believe official history, this guy designed large parts of Venice. There are plenty of star forts we only knew from old paintings because they no longer exist. The image is the Romanian city of Timisoara. The multi-layered star formation no longer exists today. We also find star forts far away from Europe. I had the pleasure of visiting this one in St. Augustine, Florida recently. What is this style supposedly having originated in Italy of the late 1500s doing in Florida? We'll get to it in the next episode. It's even more strange that traces of star forts are scattered across America. In a previous video, I showed what appears to be a star fort on a 1773 map of the Chicago area 
at a time before Chicago was said to exist. Here is one example of a big star fort outline in New Mexico, only discoverable using drone or Google map images. How does a 15th to 16th century Italian structure get to the desert of New Mexico? In school, I was taught that the area was overrun by warrior-like tribes at the time, and the newly arrived Europeans were builders of simple carriages and wooden cottages. Where did they get the skill and resources to build these structures? What philosophy was the geometry based on? Whoever removed this particular star fort probably knew it didn't fit that official narrative at all. Interestingly, the invisible star fort is near an actual tourist destination called Fort Union. I wasn't surprised to find that the government tourism website on Fort Union makes no mention at all of the hidden star fort nearby. I wonder why. Dear government, isn't it fascinating that there are remains of a gigantic star fort near this site? Isn't that something tourists might want to see? Wouldn't it be fun for historians to speculate on who built it? No need to answer. These are rhetorical questions. By the way, this is something similar on the other side of the world. As discussed in the previous video, the Pacific Islands have traces of ancient star shapes too, but here they are not called star forts, but rather star mounds. The main structures have been removed, leaving only outlines. This one is in Samoa. This pyramid inside of a star fort-like structure is in China and called the Mausoleum of Emperor Xiaojing of Tang. The Tang Dynasty ruled in the 7th and 8th century, according to Chinese chronology. I guess it's a stretch to call this a star fort, but we'll see in a moment why the worldwide star fort builders and pyramid builders might be related. And then there's this. At first I didn't know what this flag meant. A reader commenting on the article informed me that this is the flag of CSDO, a military alliance between Russia, Armenia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and Tajikistan. Why does it look like a star fort? Does Putin believe he is a defender of that old lost empire? I'm just speculating. The official narrative calls them a bastion fort. There is an alternative history view that star forts were free energy generators, part of a worldwide grid that supplied the world and its inhabitants with energy. There is a negative alternative view that humans were the batteries that supplied the energy. I don't subscribe to any of these stories, neither official nor alternative. It's best not to jump to any conclusions too early. Nobody knows enough about anything to make a final conclusion on what happened. I really prefer to stick to what I know for sure. That means my research might progress more slowly, but at least the information is reliable. I know for sure that star forts were global and that the official version of events is false. Beyond that, I don't know yet. This video is just an introduction to something I find really fascinating. I've split this into two parts because it was too long and I didn't want to take up too much of your time. If you find this video interesting, I look forward to seeing you in part two.